In this final podcast of Equilibrium, we're going to investigate factors that can affect the equilibrium and whether or not we can shift it from left to right just by changing a few things. So uh, this principle here is called Le Chatelier's principle. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly, but uh, giving it my best shot. Um, usually we just call it the Le Chat principle, Le Chat. And uh, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to show you how this works. Um, essentially, uh, Le Chatelier's principle says when a chemical system is at equilibrium and is disturbed by a stress, the system will respond by attempting to counteract that stress until a new equilibrium is established. That's a lot of words. So let's uh, see how we got this. Essentially, there are three things that you can do to cause a shift in equilibrium. Either we'll shift it right or left, uh, favoring products or reactants. We can uh, mess with things to do it. The first one is concentration. The second one is temperature. And the third one is pressure. And we're going to go through each one of these uh, separately and show you how they can affect it. So the first one is shifting equilibrium with concentration. So we have a chemical equation up here, A plus B yields C, and has a KEQ equal to 1.5. Um, so basically, in, when you change with concentration, the KEQ is still going to remain the same um, when they're changed. Uh, so an increase or a decrease of a reactant or a product will affect the amounts of the other substances in the reaction. Uh, so in this case, concentration, the KQ has to remain the same. So what we're going to look at here is imagine if I took some C away from this equation. I, I got rid of some C and I decreased its concentration. Well, that'll lead to um, a product reactant ratio that's less than what KQ should predict. Uh, so if I remove C, A and B are going to want to replace that. So what that'll cause is it'll cause a shift in equilibrium to the right in order to create more products. Since we just got rid of some of the products, A and B will actually uh, start to try to form more of that product. Um, so um, if we increase A right there, uh, say we put A in there, well, what that causes is a reactant product ratio that's uh, you know too big or, or too small. Uh, for KQ and it's, and it's it's not going to be the same. So what's going to happen is uh, increasing A. Uh, there's too much A in there, so it's going to want to try to get rid of it. Well, how's it try to get rid of it? It's going to react it with B and make more C. So that will also make more C, which is considered to be a shift to the right. We're going to have the forward reaction go more because we had so much A in there. It wants to get rid of it. Let's do the forward reaction. Okay. So both decreasing C and increasing A will make the forward reaction happen more likely than the, the reverse reaction, and that's what we call a shift to the right. Let's go through a, a couple of more examples because I know this is a difficult concept for people to understand. Uh, let's see what we got here. So let's say we decrease the concentration of A. Well, that means we have less A than what we should. So if we get rid of some of the A, isn't we're, we're gonna, the equilibrium is going to want to replace that. So in that case, we're going to shift to the left. Because if we have a lack of A, then C is going to make A and B more to increase that amount of A. So we call that a shift to the left. Um, if we increase B right there, we have too much B. It's going to want to get rid of it. It's going to shift to the right. It's going to move that equation, the forward reaction to the right. Um, and it's going to try to produce more C to get rid of that B. Uh, so that's going to shift to the right there. And then the third situation, what if we increase C? Well, now we got too much C. So guess what? We're going to try to get rid of that C, which means we're going to use the reverse reaction to get rid of C, which means we call that a shift to the left. It's going to make the left arrow be the right way that's going to happen. Uh, so hopefully that's uh, kind of okay with concentration. Uh, we'll practice plenty of those, and uh, you should uh, practice as much as you can to get that concept. Uh, let's go with uh, temperature. All right. All reactions are either endothermic or exothermic. Even if it's just a little bit or, uh, you know, just, you know, a lot, it's going to be, one of them is going to be endothermic or exothermic depending on its situation. Uh, so adding or removing heat from a reaction can also cause a shift in equilibrium. Uh, there is a special note here. Uh, temperature is the only factor that can actually change the value of the equilibrium constant. Uh, so let's look at an example here. We have uh, A plus B yielding C again. And you'll notice it has a delta H equal to negative 300 kilojoules. Uh, since we just covered that in the last chapter, you should know that a negative delta H value or a negative change in enthalpy is what we consider an exothermic reaction, which means heat is given off. 
Now that we know that heat is given off, we can write heat as a product. Uh, so essentially you have A plus B yielding C plus 300 kilojoules of heat. Now that we know that heat is given off and is a product, we can actually use the heat to change that equilibrium. So imagine if I added more heat to this situation, wouldn't that add more to the product side? So it would shift to the left to actually get rid of that heat. Uh, and that would cause more A and B to be produced than what would normally be produced at 300 kilojoules. If I removed heat um, from this situation, then you have a lack of heat on the product side. It's going to shift to the right to make more products. So that would be a decrease in A and B and an increase in C. So I can actually uh, really adjust the levels of C just by changing the heat. Um, if I want more C, then I'm going to remove heat. If I want less C, then I'm going to add heat. Uh, and then we'll see how it works with an endothermic reaction here. Um, here now we've got A plus B yielding C, but our delta H is positive 1100. So since it's positive 1100, it's endothermic, which means that the heat must go on the reactant side. Uh, so you can imagine if I uh, added more heat, uh, we have too much heat on the reactant side, it's going to shift to the right and make more C. Uh, if I remove heat uh, from the situation, that means I'm removing one of the reactants, and that's going to shift left and make less C. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you uh, deal with temperature. All right. We only have one left uh, that we're going to deal with here with shifting equilibrium, and that's with pressure. Uh, when pressure is involved with gaseous substances, volume plays a major role in how equilibrium is shifted. All right. So you can imagine if we... Uh, when we increase a volume, that means the pressure is going to be decreased. Uh, and the equilibrium will shift towards the direction that contains more moles of gas. Uh, but when volume is decreased, that's going to increase pressure. And the equilibrium will shift towards the direction that contains less moles of gas. So let me show you an example of this. Uh, not too bad. Um, we got A plus 3B yielding 2C. And notice there are all three gases. All right. Uh, now look, we, let's look and see how many moles we have. Uh, on the reactant side, we have four moles. Uh, notice we have one mole of A and three moles of B. And on the product side, we have two moles, uh, just two moles of C there. So imagine if I had a decrease in volume, uh, it would favor the products. Uh, so it would shift right. Why does it favor the products? Because there's less moles over there. A decrease in volume sure would like less moles of a gas in it. Uh, so it'll shift that thing to the right. We'll get more C produced and less A and B uh, found at equilibrium. If we increase the volume, now it's going to shift it left because now we have uh, a lot more volume. It'll shift to make sure that we have more moles of gas in there, uh, which will shift it to the left. And we will get more uh, A and B and less C at equilibrium if we increase the volume.